Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the show where we get geeky talk tech. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg here, ready to uh, get down with it here in the studio in Pittsburgh, PA. Um, of course, uh, with me as usual this time remote is John Chachilla. Chat Chilla on the Twitter. How you doing, sir? Pretty good. How are you doing? All right, all right. And also with us, hey, you know it's Penguins night. It's Game Seven. It's Mike Pound, Uncle Sweet. Crappy. Your Uncle Crappy from the Beaver County Sweet. Times, representing. <laughs> How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. How are you? Awesome, awesome. And of course, this is the uh, uh, awesome cast where you can join us here live Tuesdays at live.sorgatronmedia.com at about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, tweet us on Twitter at awesomecast. We're on Facebook. We're on Google+. You can hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com sorgatronmedia.com ah excuse me and uh, you can find us on itunes roku youtube stitcher and uh spreaker a little bit as well uh so first of all uncle crappy you look at look at that hat <laughs> i haven't really had since since we had since uh, news break ended i haven't really had an opportunity to wear this um and i'm not sure how long i'm going to wear it tonight because it's about 95 degrees upstairs in the office but but for right now um, I, I thought I'd get some use out of what used to be a regular prop mm-hmm. when, I, when I when I did the new show. You did you did it like all all postseason, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Every time when we get into the playoffs, anytime I, I was I was doing a, a Penguins story, I, I had this hat on, nice. um, which is just a ridiculous thing. But we got some um, like, Penguins. These ridiculous now. things happen to me, so that's that's okay. Well, it, well, I do want to talk about this because this is kind of an interesting uh, thing that happened. Let me see if I can pull up the video. So you, so of course, we talked about it before on the show. You are, of course, the beer guy for the Beaver County yes. Times, which I, I love. You're featured on the front page on on on, on the, uh, the the menu. Uh, mm-hmm. I noticed today um, because I, I know I know you'd been popping up there when 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 at least when it started. I didn't realize how how much how much how much you're right up front there you're like you're kind of the face of it down there this um, is uh yeah it's 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 kind of turned into a big deal and with the uh the um uh, pittsburgh craft beer week which was uh, a couple weeks ago um it, it kind of turned into a, a bigger thing and uh and I, I sort of lost control of my life and existence uh, for about for about 10 days um I, this this happened but the company bought me a sign uh it's a giant banner um, it traveled around during the week to appear at events, um, and what this turned into is when people started taking pictures, there's the sign. Um, uh, there's me also looking kind of dubious about the sign, which it, it took me like a week to get over that. Uh, people started taking pictures with the sign, like from the first time I handed it off to Beer Week organizers. Um, there was a, a, a hashtag uh, right there, Beer Guy Selfie. Um, when I assembled this video that that uh, Sorg is playing right now, I counted somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 photographs, and I know there are some that I, I could not find, um, but these were all tagged uh, with me. That would be that would count as a, a meta selfie because I'm in it as well as the sign. Um, so it was fun, and it it was a, a little odd to see my face showing up at all these places when I showed up. That's, um, but yeah, there you go. There, there's the, the the beer guy selfie. Um, I still I have to get the banner back, uh, and I imagine it will be making other appearances. Uh, it certainly would be around for for craft beer week next week or next year. But fun, fun awesome. stuff. Awesome. Of course, go over to uh, timesonline.com to check that out. Uh, hey, we'll stay with you here. You have your awesome thing of the week you just sent me. <laughs> oh God. Okay, I got to take the penguin off. Get the penguins. Penguins be warm. Um, my awesome thing of the week has uh, turned my week into something that's a little bit less than awesome. Um, our, our 1938 vintage toilet uh, sprung a leak. And as um, there it is, um, it, it wasn't bad shape. Uh, some might, might have been something we could have fixed. But we figured it's that old. we gotta, we got to clean it up and, and uh, uh, maybe replace it with something that's of a, a little more recent vintage. What I found is that whoever installed this toilet, and this is the one and only toilet that's ever been in our bathroom, um, 
they came up with some stuff that's made it nearly impossible for me to actually uh, fix a new toilet to our bathroom. We do have one in the basement, so don't worry about us too much, boys and girls. Um, the, uh, the 1930s, 1938 technology around the flange and stuff, holding it in and the subfloor there, that's what that looked like. Um, so my awesome thing of the week, although it's not so awesome for me because I, I'm still uh, without a toilet in our main bathroom, is the plumber who installed this thing in 1938. Uh, sir, I, I salute you. You are my awesome thing of the week. Wow. So to explain what is going on here? <laughs> the round thing is the flange. That's what attaches that attaches to the floor. Mm -hmm. And the toilet is attached to that. And then the wax ring sits on top of that, and there's the drain and, and all of that. Did you stuff. have to like pry it off of there from the looks of things? Yes. Um, this this stumped not only me and my major plumbing skills, but it stumped uh, a couple of guys who do this a lot more than I do in at, at Home Depot. Um, they're like, I, I, we have no idea what you do with that. Um, so now I'm I'm struggling because of what's underneath there. I'm struggling to attach a new flange to the floor. Uh, once I do that, I think actually installing the toilet is going to be a relatively easy process. But um, de de dealing with the, the, the 1938 infrastructure right there is it has been a challenge. Hmm. Wow. Uh, we have a question from the peanut gallery. You, what do you got out there? <laughs> so when they say that things were built better back then, is it true? <laughs> Um, better? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that I'm, I'm finding that that thing was not meant to be moved, which is probably why it had not been moved in 76 years. Oh, jeez. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> um, my awesome thing of the week, we talked about last week, I, uh, had my time. I was, uh, I was getting my time in on a Windows 8 touchscreen laptop. And by the way, the, the, it, and, and, and what was it that night? What, what was it? But was it Monday night? When did I order that? Uh, I ordered my MacBook <laughs> about that time. Um, and it came it came Thursday. It's, an, it's a new MacBook Pro, actually a refurb of the uh, October model. Uh, got a pretty good deal on it. Um, and uh, this is my first. Uh, my God, the retina is beautiful. Guys, guys, the retina, yeah. the retina is beautiful. I haven't gotten to do a lot of high end video on it yet. Um, but this, this is going to be my like editing machine probably. Um, which is sad since I have a, I, I'm conflicted because I have a whole two monitor set up on my poor little Mac mini upstairs. Um, but, uh, oh, this thing is screaming. It's got an SSD. It's got 16 gigs of Ram. I have to spring for that for, um, uh, Mac, uh, I'm sorry, Final Cut Pro. Um, it, these things are nice guys. Hmm. Um, I'm still, I, I've run into both these laptops, uh, mm -hmm. this in the windows eight, I've run into the, oh, Hey, I don't have a CD drive a little bit. Um, I was at, uh, uh, one job yesterday and they're like, oh, here's the pictures from the events. And they hand me a CD and I looked at my laptop. I'm like, no, <laughs> uh, this is, this isn't a thing we can do anymore. Um, so, uh, and there's like 150 pictures on there. Uh, so it, it's been an interesting adjustment, but I, I am, uh, I'm pleased to have a laptop with a battery that works. Um, Hey, what is the deal with this guys? When did they do this? When did they update the, the MagSafe? Because two, two revs ago, two revs ago, those sons of bitches. Because uh, I was <laughs> there's, there's a converter you can get for your old one. Okay, because I'm like, well, I got this like it's not very old because I had to replace the old one, um, and uh, I had no idea. I had no idea. Uh, yeah, so they make it like a little magnet piece that goes on the other magnet piece that goes to go in between your old your old uh, adapter and your new one, but and, I, your, and your new pro. The biggest, the biggest thing I've done with it was uh, this is what stream Chachi plays over the weekend. Um, although that was more internet issues than anything. Although it did crash, I, and I even went and bought the upgrade for Final Cut. We're on a new Final, or I'm not Final Cut, Wirecast, uh, Wirecast Five here, because uh, I'm like, you know what, it's a new thing. I'm not gonna have that to worry about. Although it did crash in the final 15 minutes of it, losing the last four hours of Chachi Plays. Uh, so I'm currently on a search. I, I'm working with some demos to make sure they will fix the file. Uh, a nice two gigabyte, maybe four hour file. Uh, so I, I'm in the process of trying to make that work now. Um, so hopefully I can get that together. I mean, really, the only reason I want it is so I can throw it in and have the entire 24 hours in the 10 minutes like I do every year. Uh, so... 
I don't know. Uh, but but uh, it worked out pretty well. What's happening in the chat room? I have something else up. You, oh, no. <laughs> he didn't know about that, did he? Apparently not. <laughs> Whoops, surprise. Chachi. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're working on that. We're working on that. I'm, I'm ready to spend money on the fixed problem. Because, I mean, how many times have we, like, said, you know, technical difficulties i got the audio and like here's the first 10 minutes of awesome cast right uh I, I need to find a solution the one solution that says they're going to fix it uh is sending the file for 300 dollars to fix yeah. yeah it gets a little hefty so um i i definitely need to find something i found a 50 dollar program in the app store but i can't confirm or deny whether it's actually working or not i found uh, uh one one program uh the demo worked on one of the you know broken awesome cast files from the last time we lost like the first 10 minutes of the show um oh no <laughs> uh but it doesn't seem to work with something that large so I, i'm still looking for solutions if anybody out there knows like a video repair software mac or windows because i got a nice i5 uh, uh windows pc now uh please let me know and i'm really scared to download um random programs on a pc these days because um, yeah. i never know what i'm getting i i feel like I'm, I'm like you know you know playing roulette every time i, I download one of them that says it's going to do something uh so so if anybody out there knows anything like that uh, uh please let me know I'm, I'm definitely looking for something i'm looking to pay good money because it's something that, that happens too often like not not too bad but i mean it happens enough every once in a while uh, uh with these programs and, and i hate to lose like giant chunks of of footage like you know like this or something you know um especially as we start doing uh, other productions outside of uh the studio here you know our streamings like that what, so, what format does wirecast record in uh i am recording it on an h264 movs um okay. but that that's specifically what i'm looking for that's one thing i noticed on the pc stuff i was looking for um they wouldn't include movs like they would have mp4s but not movs uh, I know it's pretty kind of interchangeable. It's really just the format, um, but but you can output it to a few different formats. Um, so, but that that's kind of the main one. One of the one of the few things that that make you install QuickTime when you install this thing. So, uh, so that's mine. Uh, other than that, MacBook is a dream to to work with here. Um, um, I hate everything that has one port on it for audio and, and microphone and headphones which means i can't plug these guys into my setup here i bought an adapter it doesn't work with either one of them so okay. um, so if anybody knows uh any adapters to pick up uh uh specifically so you can do the splitter thing on uh, on a mac so i can do the headphone uh microphone combo please let me know that too <laughs> And it doesn't work on the PC because if, when you plug into the one port on the PC, it says, is this a headphone or is this a microphone? Ooh, and yes. that's it. That's it. Yes. So um, maybe maybe I can get some USB audio adapters or something like that. It's a, it sucks. Uh, Chilla, what's your awesome thing? So my awesome thing is this website that I found called Adsy, A-D-S-Y dot M-E. Um, and it will actually walk you through, it, it's kind of in beta right now. Anyone can join up. I've joined up. Um, it'll let you create quickly create a hybrid application for a mobile device. Um, it's actually interesting. I've been, I've been playing around with it a little bit. Um, you join up and they pretty much give you a phone interface to work with. Okay. And then you can actually create like, um, threads from like your Facebook or threads from a multitude of places. Um, and then you can pass out links. It is a hybrid. It does build kind of a hybrid app in, in kind of like their shell. So you are going to have to, obviously it's, it, it's not a, it's not an app like you're going to download through the app store. You're going to be able to then pass someone a link and they can kind of bookmark it to their home screen. But the interesting thing is, is it gives you that ability to kind of create something that's going to give you updated content from a website or from your blog or anything like that. And then you can pass that out cross platform and it's going to auto because it's all each it's building HTML five behind the scenes. It's going to pretty much work on any mobile device, whether it be phone, tablet, computer, and it's not going to matter if it's Android or iOS or anything like that. So I thought it was a pretty cool step in allowing people to create, quickly create an application 
Um, I know uh, Microsoft's done this for Windows RT, um, but this is this is something that's a little more cross-platform, which I thought was pretty cool. Awesome. Uh, so I mean, this uh, this is something I, I know I've been looking for kind of options for like you know maybe doing apps for shows like this. We've done something with Blips and Spreaker is offering something now for people that have shows on there, but I don't know if I want to go with like Spreaker as a platform, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I kind of like this idea uh, to play with. And, and I've, I've really, I, I, have you guys been using, um, I think well, well, both of you, oh no, actually Mike, uh, Mike, you went to Android if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, I, I have uh, and, and a couple of Android devices from work. Uh, they're both ancient. Um, mm -hmm. So most, most of the stuff that we have, but we've got a wide range of stuff available at work, but the stuff that I carry with me is all iOS devices. Okay. Um, because I know uh, I've been using a few more kind of web apps myself. Of course, I know they've been doing uh, actually emulators like uh, Game Boy emulators that, that will work as uh, web apps. And uh, I, I, are you guys familiar with Forecast? .io. Uh -uh. Um, I'm not. That's what I use for my weather all the time. Uh, so you go to forecast.io and, and like Safari, and it comes up with this nice interface and actually tells you, you know, like what hours is it going to be, what level of rain, and it's surprisingly accurate. And you can go in here, and um, there's some pretty cool uh, pattern maps and everything. And you can go to it on a browser too, and you get a little bit more info. Um, I think this is what Dark Sky is based off of. Like it's the if, if that's the app that I'm thinking, that like crazy weather app we talked about a couple of months ago, it looks familiar. To, it looks a lot like Dark Sky, yeah. yeah. Um, so it, it's uh, but, but same info source, but it's um, um, you know just just a different kind of web only interface. Uh, that's that's where I go to for weather because uh, the the TWC app, uh, the Weather Channel app, just takes forever to load. So I don't even. Well, it's terrible. Like they, their maps don't render properly. No, they don't. Like, it's just a mess. Yeah. No, it don't. And if you're traveling and maybe don't have like the best service, um, and it's even more bogged down, it's it's pretty pretty rough. So awesome. Uh, so hey, without that, you know, let's uh, uh, touch base. Uh, we of course nobody's in the studio this week, but I know I know Uncle Crappy. You were talking about you need to very soon. Uh, uh, yes, because yes. because of our friends over at Slice on Broadway uh, <laughs> hooking us up. We actually we had Malengo back on for. Uh, the movie minute earlier tonight i know that's one big reason yes wait i have to bribe my host to come into the studio with pizza and thank you slice on broadway for helping the bribery uh go a little smoother uh oh, so go check them out good. they got great stuff we've been doing uh great pizza nights pizza pal nights out there uh for it seems like forever at this point um great gourmet pizzas um, if you're in the South Hills of Pittsburgh or, uh, very soon, uh, they're going to be in Carnegie actually. Uh, so go check them out, um, and tell them on the social medias, on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, that the, uh, that you heard about them here on awesome Cast, and, uh, and, uh, swing by and say hi. They're, they're real cool people. They are legitimately, they're real cool people down there. And um, the pizza is so good. <laughs> it's amazing. So thank you. Slice on Broadway. So a lot of stuff, uh, happened this week. Um, uh, first of all, I, I want to get to this because I heard there might be a rant connected here. Uh, HBO uh, is bringing a ton of its shows to Amazon Prime. Um, that's kind of surprising because you can't get HBO hardly anywhere outside of an HBO Go subscription. Or a friend's HBO Go or, subscription. Or a friend's, yeah. <laughs> Your parents' HBO Go subscription. I yeah, might be one of those scenarios here. That that, that might be, <laughs> you know. Um, thank you, DirecTV. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but apparently it's not going to, you're not going to get your Game of Thrones. You're going to get a lot of uh, kind of older series. According to this stuff, like Sopranos, Deadwood, Six Feet Under, Rome, Eastbound and Down. Uh, I think for the most part, shows that aren't around anymore. No True Detective. Um, so it, it, it is, it is the back catalog. Um, now as somebody, myself, I'm, I just finally, finally caught up with the comeback. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, is this, does this kind of let go of like one of the reasons you would get HBO go for that back catalog? Like, I know, like I'm still, I'd still love to go back and like finish Deadwood, watch Oz. Uh, their, their, their series catalog is amazing. Um, I, I, for me, I, I, this is something that I, I think that's pretty good news. Um, the, 
I, I don't have a, a, any kind of necessity to, to watch stuff immediately, uh, whether we're talking about a, you know, a show that wrapped up a, a couple weeks ago or a, a series that wrapped up several years ago. Um, I, so I, this is this is going to be a, a, a cool thing for me, and and one of the one of the many things that that makes Amazon Prime worth it uh, for me, even even with the uh, the price increase that we get hit with this year. Um, catching up with Tremé, that's but we we've we've had HBO for just on like a trial basis on and off, depending on when we renew stuff with with our local cable company, and um, so some of those that, I've seen bits and pieces. It'll be nice to go back in and fill those holes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about you, Sheila? I don't. It's like it's like a war on the back catalog. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm more interested in like the Hulu and 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 things like that that are bringing you the up to date catalog. Like one of the things that I was most impressed with with HBO Go, it was one of the first services that the minute they stop airing the most current episode, it's available on HBO Go. And not even so, that. No, not, and, and now. Um, we started watching Game of Thrones at nine oh five, right? You know, so I want to see someone that's going to get to that point. Back catalogs are great, but you can rent them. You can net. I mean, you can get them some stuff from Netflix. There, there's so many avenues to get that content. It, this is just one more avenue to get that back content. Mm-hmm. I'm more interested in how are you going to get me, like you're saying, the. the Game of Thrones started five minutes ago. Okay, I can start watching it now on HBO Go. I know Krauss in the in the chat is saying he he thinks this is just the first step, and they don't want to piss off the cable companies. But sooner or later, we need to get some kind of internet based TV, and it's still going to be running across the backbone of whoever your provider is. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't see it being that big of a deal. Um, like I, I was actually looking at one point in time of ordering Fios and if it wouldn't have been so cheap for me to get the cable card for the, the TiVo that I already had, I was actually going to say, don't give me anything. I'll watch everything over your Xbox app and your, your app on the iPad and a bunch of other stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'll forego because I can get live TV. I can get um back catalog stuff off of abc nbc whatever the, the back catalog isn't the issue to me it's it's the it's the current it's it's the current season and whether it's they need to figure out kind of like what amc did with walking dead and you can you can purchase the season on itunes and a couple other areas that you get it the day after it's aired i'm more interested in that a la carte and as close to when it went live as possible. I, I don't think that's, this differentiates them in any way of no. having a back catalog. No. Unless you're interested. I mean, all it does is kind of bring up that value even more of Amazon Prime. If you're not an mm-hmm. HBO, like, oh, wait, I got this stuff now. I don't have to get go, you know. Um, but or, did, it, or did they just get this cheap? Did yeah. they get this cheap from HBO and it, it's just... Oh well, we got this for you, and that's so. Don't feel so bad about the price being. Yeah, and, and as far that. as as far as the recent stuff, it even uh, they they're, they're saying select seasons of Boardwalk Empire, True Blood, and Dream, early seasons of Girls, Newsroom, and Veep, um, as they pass the three year mark uh, from the original airing. So that's how far back you got to go. Uh, but, you know, it, and it's also kind of a, a thing where, well, if you go catch up on the back catalog of Veep or Boardwalk Empire or something, you're going to want to catch the new episodes and maybe pick up HBO. I mean, this is all. And I think Netflix is the same thing. You know, I can go watch all of, I guess this is a bad example. I can watch all of Psych, but uh, I need to go get USA to watch the new ones or buy the episodes or mm. Mm-hmm. Try to keep up on Hulu because it's not on Hulu Plus, you know. Uh, eh, I don't know. It, it, it's just even more. I mean, I, I have the problem with Prime is every time I look at Prime, I see a gi- giant list of things up front that is on well now HBO on Netflix. Um, it feels like they there's a lot of shared libraries going on. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's a real big kind of hey, um, we got 
Avengers and Hunger Games over on Netflix. Well, so does Amazon Prime. And granted, there are two different ways of getting those. Um, you know, Amazon Prime doesn't seem like an advantage to me until I do kind of more of a deep dive into specific things like they have Batman and Superman, the animated series, though Netflix seems to have everything else. But those are the two main series I want to watch. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's going to be interesting to see what they do going forward. So, have you? Did you watch any of the Amazon original series stuff? Like I, I've watched yes. on Netflix. I've watched like Orange is Orange is the New Black, and yeah. I'm, I'm a huge fan of that. Have you watched any of the stuff? We, I'm, I'm also interested. Like like we were talking about. Like I was talking about for getting up to date content but what are you what are they offering up from a, from an original series we uh actually so this last round we sat down and watched um a few of the pilots uh was really interested in, in rebels uh oh geez what else did they have um there's there a few different ones we, that we kind of dug and i know a couple of them got picked up we watched the entire first season of betas um which i can't even look at that show after watching silicon valley because um, Silicon Valley did it way better, even though I kind of I was kind of all right with betas. Uh, Alpha House is interesting enough, but it's not it's not as Orange is a New Black and House of Cards are the um, um, Game of Thrones and Oz of Netflix. Like it makes Netflix feel like an HBO at that point, and mm-hmm. uh, Amazon Prime feels like uh you know when like comedy central started doing their own programming like yeah okay okay, yeah like quality wise it just there's nothing must see or compelling or i see anybody talking about like they do on netflix Hmm. so i don't know that's my take until they pick up something that's a the cultural equivalent of an arrested development i don't think anybody's going to be looking their way so, other than whatever they're shoving down your throat while you're trying to pick up uh, toilet paper. So, now, Mike, you had some thoughts on Amazon, or books, or books, or books, or books. Yeah, I know. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna drag us into the world of physical media here for just a second. But, oh. but I'm I, I as I write my my weekly consumer tech column, I'm always kind of curious about um, uh, online retailing in the state of and and uh, how some of this stuff works and. If you remember back in the day, Amazon sold books. That was their that was their primary gig. Um, there was a thing in the New York Times, I believe this ran today, the state of May 9th, um, about a conflict between uh, Amazon uh, and its its uh, capacity as a retailer and a, a publishing house called a uh, Hachette, uh, a big big house in New York City, a number of different labels, some of which you recognize. Uh, authors that you would recognize, um, you know, like the uh, J.D. Salinger's catalog uh, or Malcolm Gladwell, uh, to name someone contemporary. Um, as apparently, as Amazon negotiated with his publishing house, there there became there was a there was a hitch, um, and and what has happened is that uh, all oh, this is one of the largest publishing houses in New York City. Um, Suddenly, their books are not they're they're available after a two or three uh, a week wait, uh, and this is stuff that is current. This is stuff that's in print, um, and and Amazon, although it has not commented at all about uh, about this, uh, did not comment from this New York Times story. Um, of what what it appears that Amazon has done is intentionally limited access uh, to to this particular publishing house because of. Uh, negotiations between the two companies and, and uh, you know, what, what kind of terms Hachet gets uh, from selling his products on Amazon. Um, and the thing here that I'm, 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 I'm curious about, uh, and, and, and I'm probably going to write more about this in my column that I run this weekend, um, but, but this, is, this is something that I haven't noticed from Amazon before, although I, I, maybe if I'm a cynical me, it isn't, isn't surprised when you're talking about a retailer the size of Amazon. Um, and, and the fact that they that that Amazon put uh, uh, Borders uh, uh, books out of business, um, that they've they've they haven't put Barnes and Noble out of business, uh, but but clearly Barnes and Noble is struggling, and 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 it's it's difficult to find any any another any other number of chain bookstores um, that that can compete with a company the size of Amazon. Um, what happens when when a retailer like this throws his weight around? Um, you know, you can make comparisons to Walmart or some of the, 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 the number of other big box stores. Although I think in, in the online world, uh, Amazon is the is the monster. Um, 
and I'm also curious about what happens with 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 other media. Um, as John said, I mean, we were talking about the arrangement with HBO. Um, is that a, that's that's probably a situation where uh, uh, where you know HBO says, yeah, this this stuff isn't that expensive. It's uh, something you can beef up in your your video catalog. Um, as Amazon continues to do that, do they do are they able to change the terms of of uh, who they negotiate with? Um, at, at what point does that become a problem for for Netflix or other competitors, other streaming video competitors? Um, I'm curious about how this works. In, in this in this situation, um, the, the the outcome seems pretty clear. Uh, Amazon has taken steps to to limit our access uh, to the stuff that's produced by this publishing house. Um, so what's so so? I'm, I'm curious about what the next steps are um, as Amazon continues to grow. Um, where where else does this manifest itself? What does that mean for consumers? Um, where do I go to buy Malcolm Gladwell books? That that sort of stuff. You know, um, I, I, and and I've noticed uh, I've been trying to actively replace going for houseware things with Amazon, right? And I've mm -hmm. noticed some of the limitations in in brands. It's not like uh, going to Walmart and you have every brand of that. Uh, I don't know shampoo. Right. Right. right, it, right. It's like you have this one, or you have this one that is not on Prime and is this much, and 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 so I I feel like there's a little bit of funneling there too. Um, although you gotta say this is basically I think the Walmart effect is mm -hmm. they are the big ones. There are the ones that can make the rules if there is a problem. Now Walmart's a little easier because they if, if you don't play ball with them, you're st simply not on their shelf, right? Yep. Uh, this is well, yeah. We'll put it on your shelf, but we'll put it way back in the shelf, two two to three weeks behind on the shelf. Um, I, I, how are they doing? Are they simply not ordering enough that they put these weights out? The uh, the the publishing house says um, we are fulfilling our orders on schedule um, and and uh, to the degree that that Amazon is asking. So the the product should be in stock. Uh, and, and what happens when you order, they, they used a, a couple different examples. Um, titles that are, that are, are, are fairly recent, uh, still in print, should be easily available. Uh, you try to buy them, uh, you're met with a message that say this will, this will ship in two to three weeks. Um, you're also apparently, uh, as Amazon does, uh, you may also like this title, this title, this title, none of which are produced by, by this, this publishing house. Um, there are also, uh, Price discrepancies. I'm looking here. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell book uh, called Outliers um, mm -hmm. available on Amazon for fifteen dollars and twenty nine cents uh, at Barnes and Noble. It's it's uh, three almost four bucks less. Um, and that's and that's unusual because uh, Amazon, given the volume, can generally uh, can generally undercut Barnes and Noble or or pretty much any other retailer that that it wants to. Um, so I, it, the, the, the implied message here is that this publishing house uh, is is being punished. That, um, and it's not like you're completely without. I mean, they do have a Kindle version. Yeah. No delay on that. There are new right. and used and collectible versions that are available from other retailers. So they're just saying, mm, we're just not going to plug. It seems like they, it has to be they are creating the bottleneck. At this mm -hmm, point, mm -hmm. they're not just like they're just not like man. We'll send that out. Uh, they they they're saying we're just going to completely under reserve titles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And it's exactly. not like this is a company that where that happens a lot to. <laughs> I mean, their reputation is I get it in two days. I can right. still get Prime. I'll get this in two days after they apparently get it. But still, like it, it and and. Yeah, that is it is that is kind of a concern. I for me, if I was like I want well, I've read Outliers, I'm I'm familiar with it, maybe I wanna wanna read it again or something. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm looking at this, I'm seeing Prime, I'm seeing ships in two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want the Kindle version, but either way, well now you're buying the Kindle version, now you you're throwing a bigger cut probably to Amazon. To Amazon, yeah. Or yeah. you're buying one of these other copies that nothing probably goes to the mm -hmm. To the mm -hmm. uh, to uh, the publisher, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. interesting. Do you, do you think this is a result of Amazon wanted to be on top, and and things like the Kindle were sold at <clears throat> or um, below cost, so they were losing money trying to make it up on the back end, so they could drive real retailers like um, Barnes and Noble 
and borders uh, into the ground. And now that they have successfully done that, they're trying to turn bigger profits. I mean, you look at you look at their income, and I don't want to get into a big financial analysis because I'm not a finance <laughs> guy. But you look at like their finances from like 2012, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. took a thirty-nine thousand dollar loss for the year. Yeah. So yeah. is is this we're we're gonna we're gonna make we're gonna sell everything so cheap, and pretty much live on loans to get this out there and run everyone else into the ground. And then we will control a, pretty much a 97% of the industry. John, I, I think that's it exactly. I, I think it's it's safe to assume that any media that that Amazon sells that are that's that is specific to its platforms, um, and that's you know that's the video content that it's that's available through through the Prime service, uh, the Kindle versions of books. Um, that's be, because they've sold all these devices uh, at cost or below cost, and and, and I, I think below cost is probably the safe assumption. Um, that, that they they have to make that money up somewhere, and that's that's how they're going to do this. And and it, it 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 makes you wonder if if this is the kind of thing that's that's going to happen at Amazon more and more frequently. Um, because I you know if if I'm if if, if I got to read outliers right now. Um, and I got to wait three weeks to get a, a physical copy of the book, uh, or I can I can download a Kindle copy right now. Uh, which 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 option am I going to choose? Um, yeah, that that's that's where Amazon's got to make its money. And are they are they are they saying that th this is not happening with any other publisher to anybody's knowledge? Um, I have not read or heard of any other instances of this happening. Okay. Um, and, and and I don't know. Uh, obviously, we don't know what the what the details are of the negotiations, and we're taking a look at the story again uh, as we're as we're talking. Um, but I, I don't I, I I would be surprised uh, given Amazon's position if we don't hear about this coming up again, um, and 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 maybe even more frequently. Hmm. Yeah, I think we, um, um, Carla just got not too long ago actually like some kind of it's not a it wasn't a rebate but it was due to a lawsuit for price fixing where she mm -hmm. just got we she just got a credit for i can't remember how much based on on the books that she's purchased and and, and everything so i'm guessing that this is going to be like like to your point this is going to be something that's ongoing and they're going to have mm -hmm. to fix relatively quickly because someone else is going to step in or come up with a better product or you're going to see Google Play take off or, or something else. Now, the physical media is going to be a little tougher, but from a digital download perspective, mm -hmm. I could see I could see people moving to other platforms. Because I saw some weird stuff. Like our coffee, the coffee we buy off of Amazon went up, mm -hmm. I think, $30. Now, ah. now, mind you, it's only $30 for the case of coffee. Mm -hmm. So it pretty much doubled in price for like a two and a half week period mm -hmm. and then immediately drop back down. That's why I'm a little wary about the subscriptions. Um, mm -hmm. Like again, for like toiletries and stuff, because mm -hmm. I I've seen like, I will manually go back and, and purchase like the same thing. I'll just go back in my order history and say, okay, we need another thing of this. Um, and then just see a drastic, like pray, you know, you know, a lot of times it works in my favor, like buying DV tapes and stuff for, for my work. I'm seeing the prices go down, but something like this, you know, it, 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 it's always seemed a little odd to me. You know, are they just not getting all the brands in there or, or, you know, like the coffee thing, right? Um, tell me it's not the fog chaser. So it was the fog chaser. Oh but, my God. But no, but it's the prices <laughs> back down again. But now here's the bad part for, for Amazon. So it was $30 for a case of 80K cups, right? Mm -hmm. it, went, it went up to almost $60, I think. For, for a short period of time. So we actually switched, we're Costco members, which is actually how we originally found Fog Chaser, but they, they don't carry it in the store anymore. So doing a little research, jumped over to Costco.com, for $43, I can get 160K cups. Boom. So I'm getting, for almost, the, for, for, for a little bit more than I was paying, I'm getting double 
And mm-hmm. because we're Costco members, it's half, it, it's free shipping. It yeah. does take, you don't get it in, in two days, but it, it is free shipping. So uh, we've, we've actually left Amazon for our coffee, which is, this is now going to, could cause a landslide effect. And will we renew Prime at the end of the year? Because hmm. Hmm. If, if I can get close to the same of what I'm getting out of Amazon, which that the whole reason we subscribed to Prime was because it practically paid for itself in the free shipping for the coffee. Mm-hmm. And now I'm getting the coffee free shipped from Costco. Uh, there's, not, and there's not a huge... I mean, I do buy some tech off of there. But it's not enough for me. It, it could. I, I got to look. Is it going to be enough for me to actually want to continue a Prime membership? Hmm. Okay. Of course, they're all pushing us to buy digital stuff now, anyways. So one day they won't have those warehouses. One, day, you know, you know what's going to happen with Amazon. One day they're going to they're going to have the Netflix effect. Netflix went and built all of these warehouses. So you make sure you got that DVD the next day, right? Right. And right. now that's been supplanted by the digital side. And uh, they're around. We probably closed half of them, you know, just because volume isn't so great. You still usually get your DVD in a day. Uh, but it's really been really, really de-emphasized. If you go to Netflix.com, you can barely even find the DVD service anymore. Um, and, and I think Amazon, their pie in the sky is eventually... Yeah, most of our stuff will be you buying TV shows and subscriptions and this and Kindle. And we're maybe, uh, maybe, maybe we don't need to carry Malcolm Gladwell physical books anymore because our, our resellers are handling it and our digital is handling it. And we get a bigger cut off the digital really in the long run. Uh, so maybe you're starting to see them try to uh, uh, push us in those ways. Which but digital coffee just doesn't taste the same. <laughs> <laughs> You print off a flavor pack. You put it in the machine. I you're don't good to go. Want digital, digital beer. No, no, yeah, no. They're, they're, they're going to start sending but, like 3D printed. It's here's, here's the schematics to 3D print your next whatever. But then again, the, on the other vein, they're also doing uh, uh, Amazon Fresh and stuff like that. And so I don't know. That's kind of a maybe a further pie in the sky thing. But mm-hmm. anyways, um, so. Oh, I had one queued up here, but I was checking out your other stories. Uh, Xbox is making some changes. I think we'll probably talk about this a bit more on Boss Battle, I'd imagine. But um, uh, on the tech side of things, they're uh, going to be uh, putting out a version of Xbox uh, coming up uh, without Connect for the hundred dollars cheaper. So I think. It's, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I well, I, I think it's it's a uh, it's not as required as we thought it was. Well, and and here's my point of view on that. So I think it's a huge mistake mm-hmm. because it's not that it's 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 not required as it, or it's not as required as you thought it was. <laughs> the whole the whole piece of Xbox record that to to push up video, you now long, no longer have that option. Mm-hmm. So you start to lose out on that that whole piece of Twitch. That I'll, I'll be honest with you, I have never enjoyed voice command as much as i have since we had the the baby because now i have two arms tied up and i and i use it all the time xbox watch tv xbox change to hbo xbox <laughs> pause xbox that's, rewind that's a like, that's a great point and 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 the inch and the thing that's interesting is is this month they're actually pushing out a connect update that will actually allow people to become part of the beta for voice recognition to get to make the voice recognition even better. I think by by not bundling it, it, it you're going to have the Android effect. Everyone's going to see, oh, I can get a free phone, so that they're, they're going to get whatever the device is that's the, the cheapest one possible, and all of the development for that platform is pretty much just going to disappear. Mm-hmm. And, and it's going to it's going to be I I think. If they would have stuck with it instead of trying to to just get more people on the platform, it, it would be a much it would be much better in the long run. Yeah, I, and I guess I guess you can say more people have it at least. But you're right in the long, in the long run, 
nope, nobody's going to buy this. It's the same price. It makes the, diff the decision even more difficult now uh, because it's the same price as a PS4. Uh, they're cutting the requirements for you to have a gold subscription for Netflix and Hulu Plus, for instance. I don't know if that's all video across the board, though. So, um, so yeah, I was reading about that today, and they, they haven't announced, uh, or they announced some of them, and I think there'll be more to come. Like you, even to get on, I think YouTube, you had to have a gold subscription. Um, that's been removed. I, I think they would have been better off of trying to to either bundle free games or bundle free content. Mm -hmm. um, they're coming out with their a, a couple. I think they have twelve TV shows in the pipeline. They would have been better off giving out free gold subscriptions or something else free that doesn't cost them as much money one of their services and keeping the connect on there because now to your point it's the same price as the playstation and now there's less to differentiate it so it's like eh, i can play call of duty over here they're I can not play really call of duty over here. they're not really there with the games or anything like that uh really uh even the tv offerings i think are pretty much synonymous with the even the 360 uh probably more on the 360 they actually just finally got wwe network this week on the xbox one um now uh, the other cool thing free games uh with games with gold is going to be on there now although it sounded like it might be on a subscription basis like as of now if you go buy the game you know, you put in your, your purchase for the game, you know, kind of like if you bought the app on your, you know, device on your computer and you, you own the app. It doesn't matter if you downloaded it right then. Um, so you can really kind of stock up your games on 360. Yeah. Apparently it's going to be a like, well, you know, you have the game for this window, kind of like uh, PlayStation Plus apparently does. So Ooh. I don't like I'm hoping that's only for Xbox One because I kind of like how things are over here on the 360. Um, I've been getting a lot of games. I mean, how like, we're the uh, trash was playing Civilization. That was a free game uh, this weekend from a few months ago. You know, I got addicted to that one, too. But, you know, if it's if you're going to start windowing these things and I got to play some of this game within the 15 days, I'm just not even going to bother. That's like telling me I got to watch Arrow at eight o'clock every Wednesday. I'm just not even going to bother. So. I don't know. It's interesting to see those changes. I, I hope it's it's more Xbox uh, backpedaling. Uh, uh, Kraus is saying a huge mistake in the chat room. Uh, and I think so. They got to kind of stick to their guns. It's something here. Um, but I don't know. The That, that console war is still kind of young. Well, I think it's young and it's one of those things where they I don't think now was a good time to release a console with where, where you got Steam and all these other technologies and, and obviously, if Xbox things like game games with gold and getting that free download a month, if, if people are willing to play games that are a year, two years, three years old, uh, coming out with a new console now was not the time, <laughs> especially when when the consoles weren't ready. Yeah, yeah. So you guys mute anybody on Twitter yet? No. Yes. yes. No, I, I really don't <laughs> yes. find a huge need to. <laughs> uh, um, a couple people that I, I will be honest with you i just scroll right past them mm -hmm. but i i just and i follow a pretty decent amount of people i just don't i don't know i don't feel the need to mute i would actually be and i and i I'll, i'm not gonna lie i didn't follow this story a lot um i saw the update come down and they had enabled muting i'd be more interested in and i know you can do this in a couple clients i don't know if this does it but can I mute by hashtag? In the in the Twitter app, no, you can't. Um, okay. I I um, uh, Tweetbot, which is the the, the app that I use like mm -hmm. ninety eight percent of the time, um, you could you can mute by hashtag, uh, which which is a which can be a very nice thing. Um, but I, I, I like the ability to have uh, to be able to mute people sort of across the board, um, and that that Twitter finally finally added this no, that's that's, that's wow. a good step for so so why would you mute a person and just not unfollow them um well there's a whole there, article here there are social <laughs> social slash work slash uh, all kinds of other situations where um actually unfollowing somebody and having them notice later would would be a bad thing um that's that's where where the mute function is helpful mm-hmm 
Um, it was, I actually tagged the, uh, on here an article from The Verge saying, why would you need a mute button? Uh, one of them is give people a proper timeout. Like if you're like, yeah, that guy's, this was a good one. Banish sports ball. Uh, if I'm really, really tired of hearing about the Penguins <laughs> during playoffs and re- I have this other thing I need to do, I can start muting some people. Here's my thing. If I mute people, are they permanently muted? Um, I, the tweet bot is nice because it gives you the option It's that you can have sort of a trial basis. You can mute somebody for a week or a month uh, or just or just turn them off. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 from what I understand, the, the, the Twitter function is it's just a non off switch. Uh, I, I don't like that because I feel like I feel like, you know, poor Riz talks about uh, Pirates baseball and then there's a Pirates baseball like every freaking day. Um, and 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 I decide I want to mute him because I don't want to get Pirates updates while I'm sitting there in a meeting uh, because he's one of the people that's on my notification list. Um, but then I'm going to forget about it. I'm never going to hear from Riz again. <laughs> Um, one thing that, that, that the mute function, people do still, uh, you will still see um, ads if they're, if they're speaking directly to you. Um, they, they will still show up in, 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 in that sense in your timeline. Um, but they obviously, they, they won't know that they've been muted uh, and everything, everything else is, uh, is turned off. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, I, this is just the, I think it's just kind of a, you know, the system coming of age. Catching up with everything else, for instance. So, uh, hey, clarification from the chat room. Brother Sorg, Matt. Hi, Matt. Uh, says 360 is staying the same and gold on Xbox One is that you're going to keep the games as long as you stay with gold. Once you're off gold, you can't play them uh, anymore from what he understands. So it will be, am I currently subscribing to gold? And you'll just lose that access. But I guess the 360, I bet it's something because they have better, quote unquote, probably digital um management over there on uh, on the xbox one and i bet you that's the difference i bet you there's only uh you know kind of like the mute button there's only an on off switch you own this or you don't own this and they can't really mess with it one way or another and maybe that's why you can just you know go by and you just have it so i don't know um i don't know anything else about the twitter mute um i i don't know i'm kind of i'm kind of afraid to pull the trigger on it <laughs> No one, no one will know the difference. No, no, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Um, you know, uh, you know, this is a person that accidentally ignored our guest on 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 a uh, podcast earlier tonight because I'm like, that, that's a whole other situation. On Google Hangout, apparently, if you ignore somebody but they're on mm-hmm. with two devices, you ignore mm-hmm. their entire account. I thought I was just getting rid of her phone. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it was a, so. There's a there's a tip for you there. Um, Good to know. Adobe Voice on iPad is. So you, have, you, have you seen that app? I have not seen it, but I'm looking at this and it's telling. So it's telling me it's, it's powerful uh, for telling stories through multimedia. What is it creating with this? So it's kind of creating a. Uh, I don't want to say a slideshow, but it's pretty much a slideshow where you can bring in video and audio and and and, a, and you pretty much record over top of it. Um, I, I see it, it. It's pretty much like one of those Apple commercials of tell your story. It's pretty much how you could create that kind of commercial where you're going to take some video and you're going to put some voiceover on it, probably throw some text up on the screen, um, do some transitions. I could see this kind of being used in a very in a tutorial type manner um, or a family type manner. Um, the, the one thing I did not like about it is there's no way that I saw when I looked at it real quick to actually export it to a video on the device. Um, hmm. Pretty much everything has to be uh, uploaded to Adobe's service. Hmm. Okay. Um, which which, which I, I wish they had, a, had something else that you could do for that. Like, could I just upload it to YouTube or could I just save it? Um, but I think the concept's really cool and it looks like an easy version. I think it's their answer to like an easier version of iMovie with some extra bells and whistles and it's free. Hmm. Um, Dude, I did not is... get to play around with it beyond creating kind of just, just throwing a couple of videos on there, recording something and then not saving it anywhere. Um, but I, I, I wish there was another export option. 
this is really intriguing to me um, because but it, the, the, being being the, the, the digital news business, um, I'm always looking for kind of tools like this, especially stuff that's easy to work with uh, okay. for uh, reporters in the newsroom. You know, obviously we have videographers and photographers, um, people who are a little more comfortable with the, with the digital side of the business. Something like this could be really, really cool for um, those those who aren't as comfortable. Um, and and uh, I, 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 John, I appreciate you saying uh, talking about the um, uh, the, the export functions because that's something obviously that would be really important to us. Although we have uh, the CS subscriptions floating around the newsroom, a couple of them, so that that might work out for us. Okay, but this this is something that I would I'm, I'm definitely going to look into. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think the applications for for the news business um, that that could be a pretty cool thing. Uh, yeah, it's and we're, I'm showing a video here uh, over yet there, Mike, of a of mm -hmm. a, a, a looks like the bit of the interface and everything. It looks really intuitive, and and that's what we need. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it, it's definitely like taking a lot of the design options out for you. Uh, yeah. So that 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 could be a lot of fun. Um, how much is this? Is this a, a free. it's a free app? Free. It's and the, the app is completely free. I think the. The catch to it is, if you want to save it, you, you have to have, I don't know if you have to have creative, I don't know, if, if, if you download like Photoshop or a couple other other apps that are that are kind of either pay or free on an iPad or, or whatever, mm. I know it gives you the option to connect up to their, to like their version of the cloud. I don't know if people get free space. Uh, yeah, you do. Cloud. I know. I know the. Um, I'm on whatever student and teacher one, which is funny since I have been a teacher for a while. Um, but you, I know with mine, it, it get, it's one of those like you get like pr basically every app, um, and you get 20 gigs of space on the uh, Creative Cloud. So, but that's for paying for it. My question is, if you're not paying, I don't so know. So, like, like I can go out on my iPad or my iPhone or or even, I think. Um, Windows 8 has kind of like a Photoshop Express. Um, I can go out and download those for free or for a very small um, amount of money without having to be part of the Creative Cloud. And it does have kind of a, hey, log in with your Adobe account. I don't, if you haven't, and I have, I have an Adobe account from do, like downloading demos and stuff like that and, and looking at some of their software. I don't know by being, just having an Adobe account, is it like Gmail where I get some, maybe 500 meg free or a gig free or mm -hmm. I, I don't know oh this is interesting uh kraus actually puts in the chat room that uh, uh office 365 is doing the same thing with something called office mix um huh. i don't know if it's quite as intuitive perhaps uh but it, it's definitely an interesting well here like like some of their well then they have these other apps like in like real quick uh, uh quizzes and and stuff like that i mean this well, that, that that's a plugin. That's a plugin for. It's a free plugin for um, PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you can now in your PowerPoint, you can you can actually record your PowerPoint, do voiceover, um, include a like like you were saying, include quizzes or polls, um, and then you publish that up to the cloud, and it gives you a place where anyone can pretty much go, and instead of having to click through a PowerPoint. It actually has the presentation kind of built in there, but you can then kind of put an interruption point in there. So it could become um, more of an interactive kiosky kind of thing online. Exactly. So so now you've uh, well PowerPoint. I guess PowerPoint has had points where they were kind of a kiosk multimedia development platform, right? Like I remember, mm -hmm. I remember they had us doing. Uh, I, I think I think they might have our early kiosk work we did in PowerPoint. Um, before they got us into the great, uh, 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 not Adobe, what was it, Macromedia Director? Oh my god, oh, I love Director. <laughs> director. I love Director, you would have loved my courses. Case. Holy crap, I had three quarters of that thing, and one of Flash. Where did that make sense? Even in 2001, why did that make sense? You know, uh, yeah, Director was used for a lot of musicians to put that multimedia track on their CDs. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Shockwave, man, those were the days. Those were the days. Uh, geez. Now we have HTML5. Um, 
All right. Uh, thanks, Kraus, for that. Uh, that's Office Mix, if you didn't catch that, if you want to explore that that option, if you're a 365 subscriber. Um, let's see. Uh, iOS 8 might have a split-screen multitasking option. That'll be handy. Yeah, um, Especially uh, if this I'll... rumor of an even bigger iPad comes to, comes comes true. I'm not huge on uh, spouting rumors, but I found it really odd that, like, Every news media site picked this this story up today about the next iOS 8 is going to bring in this split screen. And, and there's questions, you know, they, they showed some, I'm sure there are more renderings, but it surprised me how some somebody must have found something today only because, it, I, and I can't remember when it was, it was uh, probably around like, I don't know, somewhere between 2 and 4 p.m. I went and checked some of the news sites, and this this blurb was everywhere. Yes, I mean, it was. It, yes, it was. It, it amazed me how quickly it hit, like, like Google's news site, 9 to 5 Mac, Call to Mac, and Gadgenet. Like, everyone picked up this story, so there must be some kind of truth to it. Um and I'm guessing because um, WWDC is right around the corner, I'm sure there's a little more information um, leaking out around it. As a Surface user, th this this feature is <laughs> or, or a Galaxy <laughs> Note user, apparently. Uh, and that, yeah, it, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. Developers are really going to have to adopt this. The nice thing is, is that, and, and here's the way I was thinking about it is. And Apple's really good at putting finesse on something while also putting massive restrictions around it. Mm -hmm. If you took the iPad and turned it on its side, so the, the home button's on your left or right, and split the screen directly in half, you have probably the same resolution cut in half of the Android or of the of the iPad with the home button at the bottom. So now you could take any app and as long as you took the device and put it in landscape mode you get two portrait apps running side by side where this doesn't work and where this i've, I've been this is maybe miserable on on windows 8 is if you have something along the lines of like netflix and you turn the device up on its side you now have some you have a Netflix window that's running and it's like an inch. Imagine looking at an inch and a half TV screen, mm -hmm. but you have black on top and bottom because yes. the, 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 you have that little, you have a third of the screen. It's a little but, tiny letterboxed. Yeah. Right. Yuck. Yeah. So, so they're definitely going to have to put uh, um, some restrictions around this if they actually want it to probably work appropriately. But it's a nice concept where I could see this especially working is if you're if someone comes out with some kind of nice HTML editor and I'm working on my website and coding it over here and refreshing the browser over here or I'm working in iMovie and I'm building a movie over here and I'm playing it over here. So so Adobe Dreamweaver for uh, the, uh, the iPad. There you go. There you go. Oh, Front yeah, page great, express. Great. Give me a front page express. <laughs> so all my early sites were on the front page express. going to say something? I thought he said something. Go ahead. No, I'm good. All right. Uh, on that note, hey, what's coming up? Of course, you mentioned WWDC as uh, June 2nd. Some stuff from Microsoft too, right? Yeah. Uh, Microsoft next, and it's the 20th, next Tuesday. Um, they have a, a, I think they called it a small gathering in New York City. Hmm. Um, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm guessing one of the things that's going to come out, and, and I think it's going it's, to, it, it could pave the way for more surface type devices to be sold. They're going to come out with kind of a, I'm guessing a, an eight inch, eight, eight inches, the new seven inch. Um, they're coming out with an eight inch note taking tablet. Um, I'm definitely interested to see where that comes in at. Because um, with that, it can bring in a lot of a lot of students, and that's the one gap I'm seeing. Whether it's like even the Galaxy Note that comes with the stylus, while it comes with the stylus, the the Note app that that Samsung has is isn't that great. Um, one Note is actually done extremely well on both the Surface and the Surface Pro. Um, 
So, oh, and Cross just brought up. We got a we got a Microsoft store in Pittsburgh now, people. Where? Uh, it's in Ross Park Mall. It's a permanent <laughs> store. It's no longer the kiosk that they once had up and tore down. In fact, if you would have gone there today, you could have gotten a ninety nine dollar um, Surface or not Surface ninety nine dollar Dell um, tablet. And it was actually a pretty decent tablet. It's an eight inch tablet, but it runs all the x eighty six apps. So, um, but anyway. Um, so yeah, like you said, WWDC coming up June 2nd, Google fires back with IO at the end of June. Um, so it'll be from, from the end of May till through, through June, we're going to get to see what everyone's probably doing pretty much throughout the end of the year. Awesome. Awesome. And, uh, of course he's at Chilla on the Twitters. That's me. Mike follow, Pound. follow along. Mike Pound. He's your uncle crappy. And he's also at BCT Mike Pound on the Twitters timesonline.com to see the beer guy and the awesome video and, pr and probably more ranting about amazon and more um, ranting about amazon <laughs> and the weekend tech column right yep uh geek every every uh to, to timesonline.com every uh sunday morning um free for the first 24 hours after it's published it is sunday so so go take a look as I as I railed against time windows earlier this week. Um, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> no, go check it out. Great, great stuff. Uh, Crappy's doing up there. And of course, uh, check everything out. Uh, I'm at Sorgatron on Twitter. Uh, go to awesomecast.com or sorgatronmedia.com. Um, you can go to live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday at 6:30 p.m. Eastern time. Join us in our chat room. Uh, just like Crazy Kraus is, uh, you know, filling me in on some stuff. There's a big link in there I need to check out. Apparently, wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> Twitter at AwesomeCast. Uh, check us out on Facebook and Google Plus to continue the conversation. Let us know things we should be talking about coming up. All that kind of stuff. Um, and of course, a uh, uh, big thanks to uh, Mike Allen at, at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters for helping us with tweets and notes all uh, all episode here, all night long uh, here at Sogertron. And of course, also, as usual, big thanks to Slice on Broadway for feeding some of us in studio here. Uh, so with that, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. We're getting awesome. We're getting awesome.